guys, welcome to LW Online. We are so excited moving into summer at church. This is gonna be an amazing time for us this summer. We're excited about our new venue and stay tuned for our special announcement about where church is gonna be next Sunday. We're so excited, you guys. Stay tuned to our socials on Facebook, Insta, and X. And uh, today is gonna be an amazing day at church. Uh, I just love what God's doing. And uh, it was a crazy time we had last week and the heat has been crazy also, but it's summer, you guys, so it's exciting time uh, to be able to go swimming and all the awesome things we all love to do, bonfires, and get together as family and friends and just enjoy beautiful nights. And, uh, but God is speaking loud and clear, and I, I just heard him say this word, center. You know, the center. What does center mean? I mean, center, there's two meanings to a center, but the center, and that means the middle. That means everything revolves around the center. And I love this in the dictionary, it says the middle or point of a circle. Um, from every point of a circumference or surface. It also says the point from which everything, an activity or a process or a decision is made from, the center. And God has said so clearly to us to keep him as the center keep him as the center of our lives and uh, in the culture that we're living in it's you know it's a me-centered culture so it's all about us and what makes us feel good and but god says something different he says if you make me the center of your life i will direct your path i will put you on a path that will be more than you ever imagined because the scripture does tell us that he has a purpose uh, for us and he has plans for us here on this earth and they are amazing. Come on, you guys, they are amazing because when God has a purpose for your life, then you're grounded. You feel like your, your own center is grounded. When you're moving towards His will instead of your will, even the Our Father says, your will be done. And that's what Jesus told us to pray. Your will be done, Father, through us. It is gonna be an amazing day at church. Stay tuned, you guys, it's gonna be awesome. King of heaven 
feed it to my cover Unrelenting is your love Oh, and I need your touch In the nick of time you answer Every single heart who calls Oh, you're my King of heaven Oh, deserving God Your victorious
Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Greater things are yet to come Greater things are still to be done in this city Thanks, James, so much for that amazing worship. Like every week, it's just, it's, it's just incredible. The power of God is here, you guys. Uh, we're two or more gathered. The presence of God is here. Do you believe that, you guys? Um, because that's his word, and his word is true. If you believe the word of God, then you know where two or more are gathered in his name. That's what the w word of God says, that he is in the midst of us. And uh, when we worship God, we put him in the center. You know, during this time, we just focus on God. We put him at the center. We're lifting up his name. You know, we're saying, God, you know, we worship you for who you are. And really, our lives are to do that. Not just, you know, half an hour on a Sunday or, you know, with the playlist at home, you know, when we're relaxing, <laughs> right? But it's, it's about, and it's all about, you know, him. It's, you know, we all, we love to worship God because we can feel his presence. And that is a benefit. Uh, when we worship him, his presence is here because he says his presence is in the midst of his people. If we worship him, his presence is there. And uh, his healing presence is here. Um, his presence is here for us to lift us out of those heavy weights. I love this because I've seen so many people um, for the first time come to church, let's say. And the presence of God is so strong and they start to cry. And they're like, why am I crying? And it's because the presence of God is there, the Holy Spirit is there, and all of a sudden it just starts moving. And you can actually feel the tangible presence you know, of God right there. And all of a sudden people start, you know, I don't feel like depressed or I don't feel burdened. I've actually heard somebody um, give their hearts to Christ and turn around and look right at me and say, do you feel that? I feel like every burden I've had on my back for years has just lifted off of me. And that is the miracle working power of God. And that is what it means to put Christ as the center. He takes us out of these situations of weightiness and heaviness, and we put our eyes on him and we focus on him and say, God, I wanna do your will. And then all of a sudden you're in the midst of doing something that you never thought you were gonna do before. So powerful. This past week we had the Cupcake Revolution. It was a big sale fundraiser. And uh, we ended up bringing about 150 cupcakes to the Salvation Army. 
And that in itself was such a powerful experience. <laughs> um, as Pete walked in those doors, uh, the guys went and opened the doors for him because, and they said, hey, you know, we haven't seen you in a while. We know you've been down here for about 15 to 20 years. You know, we know who you are. And two guys came uh, when he had the cupcake boxes and opened the doors for him and were like, sir, go right ahead. And they were, you know, they were so stoked that he was there. And, and the, the staff was there and came over and said, oh, yeah, like, we know you guys uh, with City Lights and have been coming for 20 years down here. And, you know, we're, we're so glad to see you tonight because we had nothing for anybody tonight. We had no snack. We had no food here. And we were wondering what we were going to do. And I love that we were able to bless uh, the people uh, downtown with these beautiful, epic cupcakes from the Cupcake Revolution. It's just so amazing. But just stuff like that, you know, when you just say, God, I just want to surrender my life to you. And I just want to do your will, God. And God will place you in an amazing church like this one. Um, you know, he'll bring you in. And all of a sudden, the course of your life starts to change in the direction when you put him at the center of your life. And then all of a sudden, you start to experience things you never would before. And you see your worth and value and how your purpose is so important. And as we move forward and do what God calls us to do, he also says to give. And that's what it's all about, being generous with our lives, worshiping him, being givers. And so as we you know, are in offering right now, this is a time that we have on purpose. It's an on purpose time because God says, bring in your tithe, bring in your giving, bring in your offerings. So the kingdom of God can move forward because it takes money, you guys. It takes money to do what we do, to reach the young people, to do big events like we do in the skate parks or, you know, rebuild our building is going to take a lot of money. And we're moving forward in our fundraising, but we're also, you know, depending on great partners like you and givers that uh, are just faithful to God and want to see the kingdom of God go forward and people's lives touch. So we thank you guys for giving today. Can you say uh, praise the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. He's an awesome God. And uh, I know that he's got something for you today. Because every time we tune into God, he sends messages to us. He gives us dreams. He gives us visions, as Colleen was talking about. And he has a destiny and a purpose for us. And it's to live in the fullness of who he created us to be. That we would live above the things we face in the world today. And as you know in the Bible, Jesus talks about the perilous times. And I believe those perilous times are here. Can you say amen with the stuff that's going on in the world today? The craziness, the insanity that's going on. We are in this world of hate, folks, and haters. And it's no wonder there is so much evil, rage, anger, and murder. And Jesus said these perilous times would come. And perilous here, folks, means fierce and savage. Savage meaning violent and uncontrolled. And no question, our current generation is living in a time of out-of-control, rebellious, savage, and violent behavior. 
and sadly combined with little or any consequences for their actions. Lies upon lies and conflict upon conflict have led serious, you know, confused and, and resulting in brain damage even. Hatred amongst people groups has resulted in violent demonstration causing personal injury, even death, and tremendous property damage, folks. It's just as Jesus declared in Matthew 24, when he speaks of nations rising against nations, in the Hebrew it means nations are people groups, rising up against people groups. And oh, how we're seeing it. And these are all signs of a godless generation, as referred to in Proverbs 29, verse 18 and 19, where there is no vision of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. That's right, yes, without the unconditional love of God in people's lives, all hell breaks loose. And it's literally breaking loose. The demonic forces of hell are savagely ravaging people's minds and leading them to believe there is no hope and resulting in depression and anxiety that won't go away, folks. And recent studies have confirmed that unconditional love is a kind of love that is given freely and without expectations of reciprocation or reward. This type of love accepts the recipient for who they are, flaws and all, and it's not dependent on external factors. The findings are that when unconditional love is received, it leads to increased happiness self-esteem and resilience. How many here need some of that, amen, in their lives? You know, unconditional love is more of a selfless act than a feeling. In other words, unconditional love is a decision, an act of the will. It's a commitment. Further studies indicate that receiving unconditional love activates neural networks, neural networks within the areas associated with the brain's reward system. So while it's not a feeling in the strictest sense of the word, it does produce strong feelings of emotional well-being. Wow. If you've been loved unconditionally, you know what I'm talking about. You know, a great example, and I experienced that and we, if you were here last week, is that of therapy or comfort dogs. Lisa was here with her comfort dog last week. And these dogs are incredibly gifted and intelligent with a very calm demeanor, you know, and after a few months of training, they are able to detect a person's need to be comforted. They can't respond to your emotional state in the same way you're expressing it, but they know exactly what default to you react to. And so they draw close. They nudge you with their nose and their unwavering deep gaze and their overwhelming warmth soothes your pain. Wow, praise God. You know, a young person said it's so simple. Whenever I'm upset, my dog Ralph is right there and puts his chin on my knee and looks up into my eyes as if to say, I'm here for you. Praise God. You know, I love the many ways that God reveals his unconditional love for mankind. I mean, that's one of them. You know, whether it's that nudge, and I'm here for you, look, the overwhelming first cry from your newborn child that stirs an indescribable emotion that fills your soul. And the first time they say, Daddy or Mommy, your first love, your first kiss, how they captivated your every thought, every dream, every breath, and your constant longing to be with them. Wow. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The first time I met Claudia, my wife, was in a park area where we were, I was 15 and she was 14. We were all running around, the guys were all running around chasing the girls and kissing them. When I saw Claudia, I ran and I ran, and she was fast. And she was running away from me. She didn't, 
never seen me in her life before, right? But I finally caught up to her. And I'm telling you, that first kiss, that was it. I was in love, 15 years old, totally captivated by the look in her eyes. And wow, she looked at me like, who are you? <laughs> but it was a, a look that said, wow, I love that. And that was it, the beginning of a lifelong relationship based on unconditional love. Coming to Christ was the greatest experience we both had as husband and wife, that things began to come into place to solidify our relationship and our love. You know, every night, you know, that I would leave her, I would walk home. She lived in Sandy Hill. I lived out in Carlingwood near the shopping center at Carling and Wood, Woodruff. I walked home from Sandy Hill and she was on my mind constantly. I couldn't get, I couldn't wait to get home to call her and we would talk all night. Every night, we did that every night. Wow, you know, I'm telling you, that's what unconditional love does. When you know you're accepted for who you are, not what you do, unconditional love God says, looks beyond the flaws, as we just said. It looks beyond, you know, the behavior. It looks at the heart. Wow. Wow. You know, although most of these events are maybe one time or short term or even everlasting, they're forever reminders of our need to love and be loved unconditionally. The God kind of love. You know, love, as the world so fragrantly flaunts it, is based more on emotion and feel good for the moment kind of experiences. You know, saying I love you is often used to deceive, lure, seduce, and take, to use, abuse, and then abandon. Wow, that's the world we're living in. How we combat and overcome the perversion of a godless generation, folks. We need more comfort people. Can you say amen in our world? Hallelujah. You know, God's solution is found in Mark 12, 28 to 31. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Wow. You know, how do we reach this place that we would commit to an unconditional love for God and each other that would stop the insanity and the evil and the cruelty that's overtaking our world? How, how do we get there? How do we do that? Folks, the answer is knowing God. And let me talk about knowing for a minute. Knowing in the Hebrew means it's the word yada which is to say you know but to know it means to be entwined with the person like a three-stranded cord that can't be broken that's unconditional love a knowing that goes deep to the deepest level you know now don't turn or <laughs> turn me off here. <laughs> I want to come back and go deeper into what we've just heard.
Amen. The Word of God, folks. You know, <clears throat> we who are born again don't have the fullest of understanding, I believe, of the depth of God's unconditional love that flows through us to others. We don't even have to speak it. Because, you know, when you realize the kingdom of God lives within, the fullness of God, the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit lives within us as we become born again, as God saves us. You know, the true way to become intrinsically entwined in God with unconditional love is not a matter of, you know, us telling God, okay, take over my life. It's His grace that leads us to Him. When we suddenly realize, you know, that we are living in a world and there's got to be more. You know, the, a world where we, people look around and they're becoming depressed and oppressed, you know, angry, violent. As I said, we're in the perilous times. The hatred one against the other can only be resolved by having that one relationship with God and God alone through Jesus Christ. And that's the answer, through Jesus Christ. For God so loved you, <laughs> and you, and all of us, and all the world. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to take the sin of the world upon him, and our sin. I remember when God saved me. I wasn't searching for God but my wife knew God, and she loved me unconditionally. I believe she loved me unconditionally before she even knew God. But the way she loved me brought life to me. And I remember laying and looking at my life. We had three children at the time. And I'm saying, you know, I know every aspect of my family's life except the part of my wife that knows God. And I don't know God. And I believe it was a moment where God was drawing me to himself, that his grace was drawing me into a relationship with him. And he saved me. I didn't ask him for anything. He just came into my life, took over my life. And you know, I've met so many people that when I, you know, when we talk about it and they say, well, I'm a Christian or, you know, I believe there is a God. And often when I talk to them, I realize they're saved. They're born again. They don't even know it. God has saved them. And they're, you know, I can tell it's less than five minutes into a conversation. They're saying, you know, there's something, you know, did, I did have a kind of an experience, you know, and so, suddenly I want to help everybody. And that's when we share, you know what? You're born again. God has saved you. What do you mean? What is saved? Saved from what? <laughs> saved you for a purpose that you would fulfill the destiny that he has for you before you were even born. And that's the power of God's grace. That's the power of God's unconditional love. And that's why he says to us, go and find those people and make disciples. <laughs> when you're talking to people about the Lord and your personal testimony, you know, we don't go around, right, looking for people to, you know, shake them up and say, you need Jesus or you're going to hell. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, God shivers and shakes at that, <laughs> you know. No. We're to develop relationships, talk to people, and especially people close to you because they see your transformation. They see the change in your life, and you've gone, some of you, from monsters <laughs> to beautiful, loving, warm individuals through the power of God's love that's come into your life. And so, you know, if you're, you know, watching and, you know, you're saying, wow, I, I, I did have an encounter. And I'm telling you, 
You know, God has saved you by his grace. So many people, you know, think, well, you know, I have to get rid of certain things. I, I could never be a Christian. I could never be like you, you know, and they look at, say, no, God wouldn't accept me, you know, with the, the stuff I'm into, the stuff I'm doing, the behavior. And you know, when you share your testimony about, well, you know, I wasn't living the best life myself. <laughs> I wasn't the greatest. I thought, well, you know, actually, I thought I was the best husband in our neighborhood, you know? I really did. I was such a great guy. I would say to Claudia, look, you know, look at that guy, you know? I don't do that. Oh, I don't do that, and I don't do that. Wow. <clears throat> That's before I was saved. <laughs> but praise God, when we humble ourselves and recognize, I want to help others. I want to see my friends get out of their situations and circumstances that they're in because they've been seduced falsely, they've been lied to, they've been deceived, and they're angry, and they're frustrated, just as I was. <laughs> but I want to sh share my testimony of what God has done in my life. And so it's a matter of saying, wow, you know, God is real. God is who he says he is. He loves you <laughs> and the world unconditionally just the way you are. And I always say, wow, you know, when people come out to our events and things, you know, the presence of God is so strong. I drove up to Legacy Park <laughs> and I saw the tents and I thought, wow, the power of God is here, man. Like, there was joy all over the place. Little kids running around, you know, parents, you know, chatting it up, talking. I said, wow, you know, that's what happens, you know, when when you walk into a room, folks, the power of God that lives in you, anything that's not of God in that place, anything that's evil has to leave. Because the Bible says there's no place, you know, for good and evil to coexist. When good walks in, when the power of love walks in that room, the enemy flees. It's called resisting the devil and he will flee. And so every time I'm in the presence, go at whenever I have any kind of appointments and talking to people, and, um, I know when I walk in the room, there is gonna be a presence of God. I know the power of God. And the people, yeah, the power of God, I'm telling you, takes over. And I've had hundreds and hundreds of people in the last 50 years, you know, since I've been saved, Ask me what it is that I have. I want what you've got. You seem to be at peace. You have no <laughs> fears. I have no fears. I'm afraid of nothing. Because when God is with me, who can be against me? That's his promise to me. But I have an unconditional love for everyone. And that's, again, what a born-again Christian is. Some people say, oh yeah, I, sa I said uh, some prayer and uh, uh, they told me I was saved. Well, <clears throat> I've had many people come to me and say, you know, <clears throat> after being in your church for a while, I realized, you know, I said this prayer, but I'm beginning to realize I'm not born again. They told me I was, and I, even when I questioned them, but I, d I don't, do the things you're doing. Oh, well, you know, it'll take time. Well, they're not born again. Born again is responding to the love of God that draws you to himself. And so if you're here this morning and you know, you, you're experiencing the power of God's love, you're, you're experiencing, wow, your destiny and your purpose, takes you to a place where you can be free to be me, if you will. Free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so if you're here this morning and you, you're feeling that call, you're feeling that presence of God, you know he's here. And he's calling you. 
that I want you to just raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. I know. He's touching me right now. He's calling me. Then praise God. You know, when God takes over, it's because of Jesus. And so, you know, the prayer always, and I've had it happen so many times, the prayer of, oh God, forgive me, come into my life, just comes out automatically after they've been saved. It's after you're saved that you recognize, wow, God, thank you for saving me from the sin I was in, the world I was in. And that's what happened to me, because I'd never heard the gospel preached, ever ever in my life when I, before I was saved. And it was like the transformation was, oh God, thank you. Matter of fact, I had a vision of Jesus on the cross. And all I could think of is I put him there. I put him on the cross because of the life I was living. But he went to the cross and took that sin upon himself. And so praise God. You know, if you're questioning whether you're saved or not, well, if, if you're here and you've, you know, you've recognized that you're born again, then God's got a purpose for you. You hear it here every Sunday. We are a church that is out in the highways and byways. We want to bless the kids of this generation and that's what 457 NBS and, you know, the events we have, we're there to love on them and to serve them and let them know there are people, you know, that care. There are people that want to bless, you know. That's, that's why we give away the prizing, <laughs> to bless them. And they recognize, wow, something's different tonight at Legacy Park. <laughs> There's a different atmosphere. You know, there is a joy. There's, you know, there, there's, there's nobody trying to, you know, push drugs on me. Because the drug dealers can't exist in those environments. And that's you and I. And that's what God has called us to be who are born again. So praise God, if you're out there, and list, you know, uh, uh, out there online, Living Waters Online, and, you know, you've never had that experience, but you're recognizing right now something's happening. Then I want to tell you, it's a matter of turning away. You know, once God saves you, turning away from the life that you've been living and get rid of the things that you're involved in and watch what God will do with you. He'll, he'll save you to the uttermost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you, as you grow in God intimately, the deepest knowledge of God, your life will make a difference. You'll leave a legacy, you'll have impact, and you'll have influence like you've never known before. Praise God, he's so good, amen? amen. Praise his holy name, hallelujah. Let's give him praise, amen, come on. He's a good God, a loving God, hallelujah. Well guys, what an amazing, another amazing, broadcast at LW Online. I love church so much. It's so powerful. Um, every week I look forward to Sunday. Sunday is amazing. Um, I don't think I've missed, you know, too many Sundays in my life uh, going to church. I make it a priority in my life. God says, keep the Sabbath holy. Come on, that's, that means keep my day for me, you know. Um, so many people are like, I go to church because yeah, it makes me feel better. And it does because God's presence is there and then you feel you know, energized by being with other people in the faith. And it says, encourage each other in the faith. Come on, you guys. That's what we're supposed to do as the church. We're not supposed to be, you know, putting other people down or uh, trying to harm others. We're trying to lift each other up and work together for each person in the body to be able to feel supported. Come on, that's what the church is all about, is to do the will of God in our city, in our community, to encourage one another in the faith. You know, get in there, get some like, you know, energy with people surrounding you church is so important don't miss church you guys but i'm glad you're here today at lw online we'll be back next sunday right here at lw online also stay tuned we have a special 
announcement for our in-person church for next Sunday, July 14th. Don't miss it, you guys. Stay tuned to our socials, Facebook, Insta, and X. And we cannot wait to see you again next Sunday at LW Online.